that we're going to make tongs today. And the only reason that I'm making tongs is to show you how to struggle making tongs. Because I'm not the, the best person in the world to make tongs. There's Jim Keat, Jim Poor, Jim Quick, Shane Carter, and the late great Jay Sharp all had a knack for it. I, uh, I'm just going to show you, because we've got to make a pair in about 25 minutes. you got to make a pair get put together. If you're going to make any kind of a, a deal for your salmon side weight. So we're going to kind of blow through it. These are Jim Poor blanks. He's been supplying. He'll supply us the blanks. They're basically like Calgary's. Calgary's are four inches long. And to me, that's a waste. You, everybody ends up cutting off a little bit. So these are two and a half inches long, which still gives you plenty of material to forge out behind the boss. These are machined down after two and a half inches to three eighths round. And here's a pair that I made from a previous go. Some of the things that you're gonna watch for that you can cheat on to stay away from dangerous spots is right behind the head, you wanna have enough gap to where your boss clears. If you don't have enough, this will hang up on your boss. Quarter inch tongs are very difficult because you have your material is on this side of the rivet for the rain and then your head it's on this side well when you divide a quarter inch you got an eighth inch offset both ways so it's a very tight very unforgiving tong to make so what we're going to do is since we're making it's the ultimate pairs class you've got what you do to one you want to do identical to the other one and so what Bodie's going to do is we're going to shoot the camera from a, a amble view and then from above the anvil, so you can get an idea for each rain. So uh, hopefully we'll show some things that will help you. And these are really nice pieces of uh, blanks from Jim Poor, and the way they're milled, you know, I don't know what he's charging for them, but definitely you'll have some nice tongs when you get done. All right, we're going to do the job first. Kind of half blow, come up to the face. A quarter of a turn. You're going to come back away from it a little bit and flatten that thing out all the way down. And then alternate. I'm going to go back and forth. You can kind of see. And you can see that the cut is a little further that way so that it'll miss the opposite boss. You can start to see the material for my boss. Kind of get this rounded up a little bit, get rid of any excess material. And then kind of come in here and get that material worked up. Do that corner of that point. The material right here and right there needs to clean out so the tongs can articulate. All right. I'm going to get rid of a lot of this material up on the base of the horn.
You can see I'm pushing material out to that corner. That helps my offset a little bit. Now what I want to do is I want to reestablish my offset. And that's right there on the, the horn and that that brings the if this was a line, the center line of the jaw, I'm getting that to where the jaw is on the other side. To where we've got a quarter inch gap. And the reins will miss each other. Again, just kind of tidying up that piece right there, getting that offset. Now what I'll do is I'll put some gription in the face so that I can hold on to stuff. I've got a draft bob punch and I'm just going to put me a little bit of a dome in there. Give me a little bit more surface area. What I want to do is this is a 3 8 rivet, so I'm going to go, I'm going to try and cut a little bit of the rivet off into the jaw, meaning I want that circle to go into the jaw at least a sixteenth of an inch into the jaw so that when the other jaw comes, we'll have cut off a sixteenth and a sixteenth gives us quarter inch tongs. Does that make sense? Yes, Craig. Thank you guys. I heard you there in the back, the guy eating Cheetos in his fucking bean bag. Alright, my three ace hole. I'm gonna go, I got my line right there, I'm gonna go into it a bit. Wait until it bottoms out. I got a black mark. Now I'm going to find my black mark. Center of it. This side you want to be kind of slow and meticulous. There. Hanging over the edge. And I've got my hole. Oh, that sweet. That's all off the hammer. I've got my line. I'm ready to go. Now I'm going to do my offset. This means the reins are no longer left to right handed. They're going to be right over the right, the same side. I'm just going to hold it at a bit of an angle and do a shear right into that soft corner of the anvil. Come in here and flatten it up and move that all back over.
Come here in here. I'm gonna flatten this up a little bit. It's pretty important that these are flat. When I do that, the, the inertia twists that head. So all I'm gonna do is stick it in the vise and straighten everything out. That gets me straight again, where I'm not twisted. And get my offset in there. I'm gonna rasp this one up. On both sides of the boss, What I want to do is I want to make this a nice circle so it doesn't catch on the other side. As flat as possible. And then flip it over and do the same to the other side. These vices actually hold. And cleaning up both sides of the, the rivet, I mean the boss, Take your rasp and make a circle in there. What we've got is a line that runs through the, the piece of quarter inch stock, through the rivet, and through the reins. It divides the whole thing. That's what we want to have before we put them together. Here's where I was talking. It looks nicer if you can get your jaw really close to the boss, but they don't articulate as well. So I just cheat a little bit and I'll take a, a, a hit on them not looking as strong as to making them articulate because I'm not that precise. So then whenever I pull everything apart, I've got a nice round boss. This is to, so the jaw will articulate, and I've got some strength right here. We'll rivet them together now. Using the round side of my hammer, I'm kind of guiding that rivet down to where it locks in on the locking side. Kind of pulling a lip over the whole time. All right, we've got a piece of quarter inch in there. We want to go down the line through the center of the rivet, through the center of the tongs. Like I say, I've got a bigger gap than most people would like right there, but I've got it to where my tongs can swing. And when I say swing, there's nothing more irritating than a pair of tongs that don't come back to you. A little bit of work and a little bit of DW40, but that keeps you to where you can grab a hold of them. Quick, simple, easy tongs. How do you turn a dishwasher into a snowblower? How? Just give her a shovel. <laughs>